The meta model is a really important concept in enterprise architecture. So in this module, we're going to look at what is a meta model and how is it used in enterprise architecture. We've already seen that an enterprise is a system and that a system is made up of components or building blocks. Those components, their properties and the relationships between them are the things that are described in an enterprise architecture meta model. Those components in the meta model are often referred to as constructs. So we've got this notion that a system or enterprise is made up of the components or building blocks and the types of components and building blocks are the things that are described in the meta model. It's not all the specific instances of an application, for example, but it's the notion that there is a thing called an application and it's one of the building blocks that make up an enterprise architecture. So why is a meta model so useful? Well, firstly, it provides a formal definition of those constructs, the properties and the relationships between them. And having a formal definition means that we have some consistency and we can structure our architectural thinking. And it also ensures that we consider all of the relevant components. If we've got a detailed meta model of the types of component in, in the enterprise architecture, then we can be assured that we are considering all of those components whenever we conduct an architecture engagement. And the meta model also shows how those components are used to build an enterprise architecture. It shows the allowable ways of configuring and grouping those components, those constructs, so that we can create an architecture. Once we've got an enterprise architecture meta model, how do we actually use it? Well, firstly, we use it to define and document the constructs that we're going to need and that we're going to use within the enterprise architecture. So any type of construct, any type of relationship that we need in the architecture should be documented in the enterprise architecture meta model. The second thing is that once we've got this meta model, we can use it to analyze both current and target architecture configurations. We can see how the architecture is currently structured, why there might be limitations. For example, we might have a link between application and process, but we need an additional link between application and workflow in order to really manage the needs of business stakeholders. And that would show up in the meta model because it would probably be a relationship that we didn't already have. So as part of the change to the architecture, we would also require a change in the meta model. We also use the meta model to consider alternatives and options. If we're looking at different ways in which we might change the architecture in the future, the meta model is a very good tool to see different groupings, different ways in which we might combine the components to create the needs that the business people have. And we also use the meta model to cover all stakeholder viewpoints and views. Now, this is something that's very important. We already know that we have multiple stakeholders and they all have different views and viewpoints. But the meta model is an essential tool for making sure that we can represent their needs from their particular viewpoint, the meta model needs to be multi-dimensional. It needs to be able to look at the architecture from many different perspectives. So the key learning points here, the building blocks of an enterprise architecture are described as components or constructs in an enterprise architecture meta model. There are two different ways in which you can spell meta model. Sometimes it's written as one word, sometimes as two words. It's useful to divide the meta model into distinct areas. Typically, and most usefully, those coincide with the different domains. So it's useful to group the business architecture components together, the application architecture components together. And this would also be true in the subdomains as well. The meta model shouldn't be overlooked. It really is a highly useful 
highly practical and totally indispensable enterprise architecture tool. Too often I find enterprise architecture teams don't realize the importance and the value of the meta model, so they don't take it into account, they don't use it as effectively as they could do.